no hardware or IoT or wearable company should have to build their own observability platform or become one. Obsessed with the idea of finding out what's going on with devices. You're obsessed with understanding how they're going to be more efficient. You're obsessed with making sure that they're more future-proof. When you build an in-house tool, it, requ it continues to require resources. With Memfault, we are continuously building the best observability platform and it will continue to get better. Tyler, tell us all about what are wearables as far as Memfault are concerned and how you're going to change their world. Got it. So yeah, so from our perspective, at least I believe wearables are, are is, is a device you wear, it's typically low power, and it typically is supposed to last for longer than a day of battery life, ideally longer, I'm talking to you, Apple Watch. Um, and it usually is monitoring some sort of movement or biometric or something important that you can only get on the body. So that is a wearable device. Um, I come from the world of, of Pebble. Um, we made smartwatches and Fitbit. We made wearables and smartwatches and other sorts of trackers. When these devices are built, they are debugged. They are developed while on your desk, connected to your computer. You're writing firmware. You're verifying that these systems are working. As soon as you seal them, which they have to be sealed, they're a wearable device. They need to withstand rain. They need to withstand water and, you know, submersion nowadays. Almost everything is, is waterproof. As soon as you seal them, you don't have access to the debug ports anymore. You don't really have access to the data coming out of these devices. They typically communicate over Bluetooth to a phone that you're also wearing or I guess kind of wearing in your pocket as well. And getting enough data out of those devices to be able to one understand what the product is doing you need to under you need to get the sensor data out but you also need to understand how these devices might be experiencing the world experiencing failures um you know you need logs from the device um, every firmware engineer every design engineer everybody who builds any sort of software or hardware like needs some sort of understanding of what's going on on these devices behind the scenes i guess that the user doesn't experience um, getting all that data into a single place that is easily, you know, usable by, by, by you and by teams and by people that you hire in the future that can scale with the company um, is all really important. I think one of the common problems that we have seen is a company that has five devices can kind of work around the issue of collecting the, the, this data. They like know the five people that are using their wearable device. <laughs> They give them some exact commands on how to get the data out of the device, and they know they just like put files on their desktop and they can look at them. But as soon as you get to a thousand devices, you mentioned ten thousand devices hitting that point, yeah. it becomes unscalable. These you can't have ten thousand files on your desktop of all the logs from these devices and look through them and scan them um, and triage issues. And then, and then let's not even talk about you know a hundred thousand or million devices, which is where we actually wear a Pebble and Fitbit, like. Actually, ingesting all that data is more mostly a scaling problem, and now you're in you know your success is an actual problem preventing you from even knowing what's going on in all of your devices in the field. That's that's the start of the story, <laughs> right? So what you described there is a is a is the ability to do this word observability. It's your, the ability yes. to see the data, to get the data, so that you can mm -hmm. you know at, at the end of the day when you're in the world of, of wearables, you're in the consumer world essentially. You're in the medical world, consumer world, but it's it's human beings. Um, so you know that that is a world where brand and things like battery life are incredibly important. They're incredibly sensitive issues. Um, yes. So uh, how does how does Memfold offer? Uh, I think there's two issues there: uh, scalability on data. So mm -hmm. you know you talk about um, I think what Memfold call them is vital signs. How do you sort of make sure that that data is 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 moving backwards and forwards? And that you talk about scale. So that's a really mm -hmm. important issue because any startup in the world that's making a wear wearable aspires to be you know hitting the million mark, but it takes time to get to those steps. Um, so Absolutely. How do you how do you help scale that that in terms of data? So that's the first question. And then the second question is, um, are you able to improve battery life post production while the devices are in the field, or do you learn that from the data that you get in so that you improve the product as it goes through its production life life cycle? Got it. Um, so yeah, two questions. So 
I think there are two pieces of the memfault puzzle that we solve with respect to data. One is collecting the data from these devices in a way that works for these kind of usually constrained devices. These devices are, you know, have just a few kilobytes or, you know, 100 kilobytes of RAM. They aren't Android phones that you're attaching all over to your body usually. They're not on your wrist. Um, and they also need to last a long time on powder. And so in that constrained firmware and in simple ways, um, collecting the data, usually via, it's called metrics. But getting all the data out of the device, Memfault provides an SDK that makes that almost trivial. And then getting that data over Bluetooth to some sort of gateway up into a central server is also something that we do incredibly well. And we have a system built for it. Brilliant. On the other side of that <clears throat> is now you are ingesting the data. These customers would usually have to build a data warehouse, use AWS, host the database, hire a cloud engineer, a data engineer, and then some sort of backend engineer, or front-end engineer to visualize the data or to write SQL queries. Memfault just includes all of that kind of out of the box. As soon as it hits our cloud, you can query it, you can create a dashboard, and you can use it with an, with an easy to use tool and all of your team is pretty much trained already. They all know how to use a, a graphical interface, which is amazing. And yeah, like we essentially have built a data warehouse for every single firmware company or observability company, or sorry, observability need that anyone can use. Yeah. And second question you asked was, uh, how do we improve battery life? Like, is it a, is it a pre-production problem? Is it a post-production problem? Is it even a development problem? The sooner you collect the data, the better. And so as soon as that device, from our perspective, as soon as that device is off of the desk and onto a body or onto a, you know, onto a wrist, onto a, um, somewhere on your body, it's probably sealed. And you can start collecting some data about its power characteristics and about its power performance or even about its connectivity performance. <clears throat> and then getting that into a dashboard so that you can track it early and often can educate you and, and kind of teach you when there's a regression. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard when this device is supposed to last seven days. You're like, great, we're ready for production and it's only lasting three days. It's really hard to get that back to seven days and beyond. But if you are from day one tracking the battery life, and making sure that it stays at seven days. And if it ever dips to five days, you know, like, oh, it was, it was a change in the last three days that caused this. You can go dig into a very small subset of changes. You know, with battery life, for instance, it's it's very, very complicated, isn't it? Because it, it's down to usability. It's about the amount of data that's moving around. There is unpredictability in consumer use and movement and what they do and how they do it. Uh, and until you have thousands of products out in the field, you can't necessarily predict that or understand it. You can say seven days. I mean, I've got an electric car. Every single electric car says it can do 300 miles. It can't. It can only do 170 miles. Um, and and but at least they admit that now. So, are you, uh, just 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 to, just so we're clear, are you able to 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 make things more efficient um, on over the air updates in terms of things like power, or is it learning? in order to make the product more efficient in its in its in its later uh, product life cycle? It's a little bit of both. The Memphis product doesn't, I guess, solve problems of power. Ultimately, the, so one of the biggest uh, kind of contributors to power drain is the network connection and is the amount of time the device is actually online trying to send or receive data. Memphis has spent a lot of time kind of reducing the amount of data that needs to be sent um, minimizing the bytes, bytes that need to be actually sent over the wire. And so right. ultimately you need to get the, that data out. We spent a lot of time kind of minimizing that. And so you can keep the radios, keep the device asleep more often, which will save power. Otherwise, if you're not optimizing that, like that, it will actually consume a ton of power. <laughs> right. That's a very interesting subtlety. And now, now, so, so would you say that's a well-known fact about, um, you know, you would think that things are using power at the point that they're being used. You know, I mean, I'm I'm a simple consumer. My understanding is if I use something, it's using up most of its power. But what you're actually saying is it's the transfer of data when it's connected that uses up the most power. So if you can make that more efficient, then you're going to make your device more power efficient. For sure. Um, I would say those devices, like... Maybe, maybe not exactly wearables, but the devices that are supposed to last a month or two months and then only use Bluetooth, their main power draw is how much 
time the Bluetooth radio is on and sending and transmitting data, especially if it doesn't have a screen and especially if it doesn't have, you know, other sensors that consume a lot of power like GPS. It is truly the amount of time that radio is on and sending data. And so if you can minimize that, which Menfold helps you with, you will yeah. reduce the power, power drain. Yeah. Basically. And that's where this whole idea um, of uh, vital signs comes in and the observability comes in because you can see the trends in the data, how long the data is being transferred, at what point it's yes, being transferred exactly. and how much power it's drawing down. Okay. Yes. Two very good thorough answers on that. <laughs> anyway, last question, which I think is very, very interesting because we had actually, it's a massive decision. Making any change to, to, to a product is... Uh, potentially career limiting and costs a vast amount of money. We know that with observability and with Menfold, you've taken a huge amount of time, huge amount of research to give the best possible outcome today. So you could you can go and talk to a potential customer and say, you have this legacy system here, we will automatically improve it today and we can show you how you can do that. So with a wearable, for instance, we can give you the infrastructure so you can see when the data comes over. We can give you the inf infrastructure to see when it's using the most power. and We can show you that today. The thing is, how are you able to ensure that in six months time, 12 months time, three years time, mm -hmm. that you will still be delivering that level of observ ob observability. How do we know that this is a platform that's going to be absolutely reliable and up to date, 12 months, 18 months, three years down the line? Got it. I mean, I have been building these systems my, I guess my entire career, I guess probably since the first day I started at Pebble. Like, usually the most important thing was fixing the bugs in the field by the customers and shipping new features which also had bugs and so we became an observability company whether we liked it or not um but i've been doing it for a while and i don't intend on stopping because the next hardware company i want to work at i don't want to build an observability company again within that hardware company um also i believe that like no hardware or iot or wearable company should have to build their own observability platform or become one. It's not their core competency. It's also just going to drain no. a lot of resources and money and time and engineering capacity. And you also have to hire a ton more engineers. Like we had to do it <laughs> at previous companies. Um, we did have to do that. The other beautiful thing is that when you build an in-house tool, it, it continues to require resources with Memfault. We are continuously building the best observability platform and it will continue to get better. Like you don't have to support it. If it goes down, that's actually our problem. It doesn't go down very often, but we do have, you know, some, some, some maintenance that's scheduled here and there so we can improve our product, but that's our problem. And we love to make our product better and we'll continue to do that in the years to come. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose what the, the real reality to that is the more you're observing, the more you're obs yep. your, your observability platform, the more you're learning, the better you're getting, and therefore it becomes an obvious choice to go to a third-party observability platform rather than try and build your own or find little bits and parts that will solve the, the particular problem that you're trying to solve today. You better just buy into the fact that these products are going to need to be updated regularly all the time. They're going to have to be more power efficient. They're going to be able to be mm -hmm. more data efficient. And if you've got a specialist like Menfold, you're pretty much guaranteed that you're well, obsessed with the idea of finding out what's going on with devices. You're obsessed with understanding how they're going to be more efficient. You're obsessed with making sure that they're more future proof. So very, very good. Well, Todd, I think that's been an, a, an excellent introduction as to how the world uh, of wearables will benefit from Memfolk's observability. Really, yeah, that's a great introduction and thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, it was a fun conversation.